Now, before you all get mad at me from the title of this video, like I'm ganging up on Justine, ready to rip her to shreds about how she edits in Final Cut Pro, just remember, that's not what I'm here to do. Justine has showed the world a glimpse of her Final Cut Pro workflow, and I'd like to use it as a teaching tool to help all of you achieve your dreams and to take a closer look at what I really like about her workflow and where I think she can improve. And where she can improve, you might be able to improve as well. So I'm not here to be like this guy. Yeah, move! But rather, more like this guy. Help me! Help you, help me, help you. Help me help you by being open-minded about trying new things and unlearning what you have learned in order for you to edit faster, more efficiently, and most of all, with more joy and splendor. So let's jump into the edit bay and take a closer look at iJustine's workflow and review eight things she could do differently to improve her Final Cut Pro workflow. Let's get it. All right, so let's take a look at the first thing that I can see in Justine's workflow. You see that little uh, copy from Finder here into uh, another Finder window? Now, this isn't necessarily Final Cut Pro related, but you can see here that she is not using what I think is the better way to use Finder, which is column view. My big thing with column view is I feel like it's just more easy to see not only the path of where you are in a folder or on a file, but it's easier visually to drag and drop files between Finder windows using column view. So if I wanna grab a clip here in content, and if I just wanna drag it to another folder and another project, I can just go here and drag and drop and off it goes. Or I can do uh, a copy and paste. So I can select it, hit copy, and then hit command V into this window and watch it copy over. But I get this nice bird's eye view of where I am in my folder structure and watching the file actually copy over into the other folder. Again, it's just more visual and it works a little bit better. So I think that's something that maybe Justine could take a look at to improve her workflow, especially as she's dragging and dropping assets between two finders windows. All right, so next up you can see Justine's importing a LUT here, but what I want to take a look at is this area here where she has her Final Cut Pro library. She's got the library called Austin. She has the default Smart Collections folder, which comes when you create a Final Cut Pro library, and then she has the default event here. And when she dragged and dropped all of her media into this 11, 18, 19 event, it automatically created these keyword collections for the different folders that she had. And the way that they filmed this with these with this red camera, I think, RDC files, I think those are red. Each video clip is in a folder, so it creates all these keyword collections. So it's a little messy. What I want to zero in on, though, is that she's not using a Final Cut Pro library template. What's a Final Cut Pro library template? So whenever I start a new project with Final Cut Pro, let's say it's going to be episode 178-2022-9, and I'm going to take a look at Peter Lindgren's FCP workflow, okay? So not only do I use a final cut template, but I also use a finder template that has all of my files organized, my folders organized the way that I want them. So I come here to Midland YouTube template and I have this folder structure here. I hit command C and then I paste it into this new folder. And this has everything I need, all of the storage and organization that I need to put all of my media, my final cut library file, all of my film, audio, content, graphics, all the stuff for my thumbnail and of course my final export. Now in the project files folder within this finder folder template, I also have a Final Cut library template. You might be going, what the heck is a Final Cut library template? Well, a Final Cut library template is very similar to this folder template. It has built in all of the organization that I want to use for Final Cut Pro. So if I go to this Final Cut Pro library, you're gonna see all these events have already been created. So when I wanna start importing from Finder, I have a place to put everything. It also has two project files, one that's in 4K with the two to one aspect ratio, which is how I like to create my, my YouTube videos, and then a 4K UHD one in case a YouTube video or a piece of content needs to be in U UHD instead of the two to one aspect ratio. So I have my project event, I have my footage event, I have my audio event, my stills, my graphics, and my screen recording. Now that we have all of our footage, we've got A roll, B roll, we've got audio, all of this stuff now has a place to go instead of in Justine's video where it's just in this one event called 11, 18, 19. Now to Justine's credit, she may have had this set up this way because maybe she's not using the computer she normally uses. Maybe uh, because it's a competition, 
she just didn't have time to get everything set up ahead of time with a library template. And she wasn't very concerned with all of her organization because it was a four hour quick edit that they had to do for this competition. But to me, that's where you want this organization. If you need to get a video edited in four hours, a Final Cut Pro library template and a Finder folder template, those are gonna be things that really speed up your workflow and get you, first of all, organized right off the bat and get you started with your Final Cut Pro project right off the bat. I have another video that I created all about my Final Cut Pro library and Finder folder templates. You can view that with the link up above and I'll have one down in the description. I also sell my Final Cut Pro library and Finder folder templates. They're $10 each, or you can get a bundle with my Final Cut Pro library template for regular videos and and shorts with the finder folder template for $25. So three for 25, or you can get just those two for 20. That's at my website, matthewobrien.co forward slash shop. You can check that stuff out there. Anyway, Final Cut Pro and Finder templates. I think this would speed up Justine's workflow and make situations like this where she's in competition go much faster. So the next thing we want to take a look at in Justine's workflow is the fact that she's using synchronized clips for her A-roll instead of the multi-cam approach that I prefer. So you can see here, Justine has all of her synced clips, and I'm going to show you why I like the multi-cam method for me a little bit better. So in the multi-cam, if we double click it, we go inside and we can see that I have two angles and then I've got my screen recording here as a third angle. So this top angle is my master angle, it's my wide angle, but because I like to go from a wide to that kind of jump cut punch in that a lot of YouTubers do. It's much easier to do that by creating a second angle inside of a multi-cam, resizing that angle to make it what I call the close angle or your punch in angle. So if you go back and forth, you can see kind of like we would see in the video while I'm editing, you can see that it punches in. So what that means is as you're going along and blading your clips to do your A-roll cut down, let's say we're going to cut this out. Let's say we're going to cut this out. And then let's say we're going to cut this out. We know we're going to go from a wide to a close to a wide to a close. Let's say this is my picture lock. This is my final edit and I'm ready to start changing my angles. So I have my wide angle here, but I want this one to be my close because we're going to punch in. I want to use the keyboard shortcut command shift right arrow to cycle to the next angle in my multi-cam. Now I've got that jump cut there. Now a lot of you in the comments are gonna say, why don't you use the number one or the number two keys to blade and automatically cut between angles. I don't do my A-roll cut downs that way because I don't wanna choose which angle I wanna use until the very end when I have picture lock. I usually will put my B-roll in on top and I know exactly where I'm gonna be on screen and not on screen and what angles I need to cut to. If I use the number one and number two key method, it's gonna make those angle cuts while I'm doing my A-roll cut down and then later on I'm going to have to switch them all back to what I want. So I'd rather just start with the wide and switch when I'm on camera between the wide and the tight and have as few angle change operations to do as possible. But you can see how quickly you can go through the angle shifts by not having to like copy and paste from one close angle to another and then do that throughout the edit. This is a little bit faster, I think. If that wasn't clear, hit me up in the comments and I can clarify and maybe refer you to some of my other videos that show the multi-cam method for editing your A-roll. Okay, moving on. So when we look at Justine's timeline, it looks like she's using what I call the double blade method to do her A-roll cut down. Now, the double blade method to me is very inefficient. I would not recommend going here, knowing you wanna cut this section out, blading it, doing this section, blading it, and then selecting this and hitting delete. There's two other ways that you can do this. The first one is using the range tool. So let's say this section we know we wanna cut out, we'll use the range tool to select that section and then just hit the delete key. And it deletes just the selection that you made with the range tool. This is a method that I don't use terribly often. I prefer to use the trim start and trim end method where you blade your clip here and then we wanna cut here and then you hit option left, click close bracket and it pulls everything into that playhead. I think that's a much faster way of cutting down your A-roll and I think the range tool method is another great way to do it. The double blade method is just really inefficient to me. It takes more clicks and steps to get it done. These other steps can really speed up your A-roll cut down method and I highly recommend you use them. 
So right here, you can see we get a glimpse of Justine's computer setup. Now this is not her normal computer setup, I imagine, maybe when she's at home editing remotely, but when she's in her studio, she's on you know a Mac Pro or the new Mac Studio with a couple of XDR or studio displays. So something that I would recommend for her in this setup is to think about using the Stream Deck mobile app on an iPad or an iPhone and having it situated next to her. I've got a few videos that I've made about my mobile editing setup and how I use an old iPhone to run Stream Deck Mobile. Now what Stream Deck Mobile does is it takes some of the keyboard shortcuts that I had just shown you and it can condense those keyboard shortcuts like option left close bracket into the press of just one button. You want to think about the keyboard shortcuts that are a little complex. Maybe they're three button pushes or two and you use them constantly. For me it's option left close bracket and option right close bracket to do the trim end and trim start keyboard shortcuts and it's also command shift right and left arrow to cycle through my multi-cam angles. I have all of those shortcuts programmed to my Stream Deck mobile so that I can edit my A-roll even faster. I think that's something that Justine would benefit from greatly, whether she had a Stream Deck physical device or Stream Deck mobile on an iPad or an iPhone, and I think it's something you all should strongly consider. I'll link to a video above and below a video that I made in the past that shows the benefits of Stream Deck mobile when you're editing in Final Cut Pro. It really speeds up your workflow. You can see right here, she's dragging something from Finder into Final Cut Pro. And it looks like, you know, she's got some relatively decent organization um, with this project. Again, she's under intense competition, so she's probably not being as tidy as she might normally be with her in-studio workflow. But this drag from Finder into Final Cut Pro, although it's quick and efficient in the moment, it can sort of slow you down later as you get into your edit. What this does when you drag it in, this puts it into whatever event your projects are in. And I don't like when my media is all bundled up in my projects event because all I wanna see in there are projects. So what I recommend doing is instead of dragging it directly into the timeline, I would drag this into the event that it belongs in and then add it to the timeline from there. Now this does mean that it takes two steps to get it into your timeline. So again, what she was doing is efficient right then, but I think it leads to greater inefficiencies down the line with your media being disorganized in the sidebar in Final Cut Pro. All right, so another thing we're gonna take a look at is how Justine is applying her color gray to all of the clips in her edit, all of the A-roll clips. First chunk of her A-roll and is polishing it up before she's planning to. So you can see she's having to copy and paste from clips that have the color grade applied to the clips that need the color grade applied. She used the LUT, so the LUT's applied universally across all of her footage, but she had to do some tweaks to dial it in. So she's copying and pasting that to these selected clips. What's really nice about the multicam method is whatever color grade you put in here inside the multicam, and you can see if we look at my inspector, I've got a bunch of edit, I've got a color wheels edit applied here. And then I also have a film convert nitrate uh, applied here that I use for all my film emulation. But this color wheels effect, no matter what I do outside the timeline cutting up this A roll, it's going to be applied to every single clip. I'm never having to copy from one clip and then paste attributes to another one. And if I make a change, let's say I want to add a color board and then make some adjustments. When I go back out to my edit, all of the clips in my edit have that color board adjustment applied to them. I don't have to go to each one now and copy and paste that color board adjustment to each and every clip. Much faster, much more efficient with the multi-cam method. Now, one thing that I do see a lot with her timeline is she has her audio separated from her A-roll. It's not detached, so it's still linked, but it's separated. And this can just create some trickiness here with some of your cut points and overall make your timeline not quite as streamlined as it could be with all these separated audio clips up and down all of her timeline. Now, part of why she might be doing this is because she's trying to apply an audio crossfade to her clips. I think you can see here she's got a little crossfade. And what that does is it smooths out the rough transition between audio when you blade your audio. There's sometimes little pops and crackles. The way that you get into that mode is you select all your clips and you can hit Control S and it separates your audio without detaching it. And this means that you can drag and drop and do all these L and J cuts, right? She might be doing that so she can do an audio crossfade. And she's if she's manually doing the audio crossfade like this, dragging these out, overlapping them, then doing a fader, 
and then a fader here, she's missing an important feature in Final Cut Pro. So if we undo that and go back to the start, you can select this edit point, then I'm gonna hit option T and it's gonna automatically do that audio crossfade for you. Now, Justine's video was made back in 2019, and I can't remember if the audio crossfade feature was added to Final Cut Pro after that. It's certainly possible that it was, but for those of you who have been editing with Final Cut Pro for a long time and are using the Control S method to do your J and L cuts and audio crossfades, you don't need to do that anymore just for an audio crossfade. All you have to do is select the two clips that you wanna audio crossfade and hit Option T, and it'll do that audio crossfade automatically a really awesome tool in Final Cut Pro that saves a lot of time. There was one other thing that I wanted to show you about her workflow when she was working in Finder, and it looks like she's not using Mac OS's app switcher feature, which I think is the best way to switch between apps. With her going back and forth between Finder, using the app switcher, which is just engaged by hitting Command and then Tab, you can cycle through all of your open apps. You can also drag your mouse across all of your open apps, almost like it's a, a dock that's in the middle of your screen. And then you can select the app that you wanna to switch to. You can also hit Command Tab and then repeatedly hit Tab while pressing and holding Command to cycle through all the apps. And if you wanna go from right to left instead of left to right, you can hit the Grav key on your keyboard next to the one if you have a US QWERTY keyboard and cycle from right to left with the Grav key and left to right with the Tab key. I've got an entire video all about the app switcher method of switching between apps. You can check it out here or click in the description below and uh, check that video out. Well, thanks everyone for going on a little Final Cut Pro adventure with me, an adventure into the mystical land of iJustine's Final Cut Pro workflow. I hope you learned some new tricks that you can apply to Mac OS and your Final Cut Pro workflow. If you did learn something new, please give this video a like, and of course, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you part of the Final Cut Pro fam. Now, just a quick shout out to my good friend, Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Bro. His picture-in-picture -picture effect was clutch for creating the picture-in-picture -picture effect I used in this video. If you wanna learn more about how to easily do this for your tutorial videos, I've got a link in the description that'll take you to Dylan's Patreon where you can get access to that incredibly useful effect. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then definitely check out the first video in the series that started it all, where I take a closer look at MKBHD's Final Cut Pro workflow and offer tips on how he, and possibly you, can get faster and more efficient with Final Cut Pro, especially if you're using the gap clip method to edit your videos. Click here to check out that vid, and until the next one, I'll see you all soon, and remember, keep chopping that broccoli.